at an FAA fire test facility. Okay, let's do this. They hope to recreate the fire that consumed Flight 592. One minute to ignition. We had to trigger one of the oxygen generators manually. at all. We didn't really get uh, much of a fire. An activated oxygen generator isn't enough to set fire to the cardboard box it's packed in. So how'd these things start a fire? NTSB investigators are back at square one. They can't prove their theory. What were these things packed in? The failure of the fire test prompts investigators to look more closely at exactly how the oxygen generators were packaged for transport. The first test we did, we had not uh, packed them exactly the way they were packed. I need a layer of bubble wrap. Like we did this. not Never use box. bubble wrap in the first uh, test, that is, put bubble wrap over the top of the generators before we closed the box. We put five boxes of oxygen generators, put them on top of uh, a tire, and put some luggage around them. OK, let's start it up. made uh, an unbelievable noise. It, it sounded, it was a high-pitched scream. We, we all looked at each other, we were kind of startled. I mean, the sound was deafening. Ten minutes after ignition, the ceiling of the test cargo container reaches 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Lord almighty. We almost destroyed their test facility. After 11 minutes, it exceeds the capacity of the monitoring equipment. All right, let's uh, get that fire out. We had a raging fire, and wow. none of us had expected a fire to be that big and that hot. And it was just amazing to see how disastrous, how, how destructive something this long and that big around could be. The experiment supports the NTSB theory. Improperly packaged oxygen generators caused the crash of Value Jet 592.